Meanwhile, officials are keeping a close eye on Halemaumau Crater. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is closed in anticipation of steam explosions, which could happen once the lava lake drops below the water table. My co-anchor Howard Dashevsky spent the day outside of the park. Hi, Howard. Aloha, Marissa. Good evening to you from the Big Island here. We're standing out in front of the sign that welcomes people to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. But in truth, the real entrance is about a quarter of a mile up the road. And we actually had an opportunity to go there and check it out this morning. And when we got there, this is what we saw. There were barriers all the way across the road, pretty much telling people it's a danger area, the park is closed, and to stay out. Despite the signs, we did see car after car come up all of them making U-turns, and pretty much all of them turned away. We then decided to take a ride about, though, three, four miles down the highway. We found a vantage point, and we stood up there for a while, and then a bunch of other people stood up there and started watching the plume. And there were some that were bigger than others, but considering they couldn't get in the park, it was at least an opportunity for them to experience it, to see the plume, and it was a pretty decent vantage point. Now, after that, we pretty much went right across the street. The town right here to my left, this is Volcano Village. There's a couple thousand of people that live there, and they're literally right here in the shadows of the volcano. We talked to them about their concerns, even their fears about what they've been learning over the past few days. Call Susan Cabral the sheep whisperer. Living on 19 acres in Volcano Village, she has plenty enough space not only for her woolly friends, but for chickens, pigs, and horses, including my new buddy, Resin. Then there's her neighbor just a couple of streets over to the west, the one that's been acting up lately. I've been monitoring it since about 6.30 this morning, just coming out every hour. And around 9.20 or so, there was a huge, huge plume coming out of there. While the conditions were favorable in this part of the Big Island today, Susan knows that if the winds shift, concern grows. And those of us who have respiratory problems, heart conditions, any of that sulfur dioxide coming over is really harmful. Um, if there were an ash fallout, that would be a big concern. It could get into our water systems, plug up our pumps. Um, we do have concerns for our animals, um, if we have enough shelter for them to keep the ash from falling on them and hurting them. Like many living in the shadows of Hawaiian Volcanoes National Park, Susan has been paying attention to daily briefings by both park officials and civil defense. Rico, sorry we can't go over to the volcano today. The park's closed. Scott and Candy Hawan also live in Volcano Village. He says all the activity at the park has also caught his attention over the past few days. Indeed it did. Yeah, the um, looking at the pictures from 1924, it, you know, it, it was spewing and it was kind of scary at being so close right across the street. Um, we were We were a little nervous. And talking to friends, they were a little nervous too. But like most who live in the proximity of the volcano, he says following all the community outreach has calmed those nerves. The quote that really sticks with me is uh, one of the women, I forget her name, said, oh, it's going to be a little inconvenient. But we're, we're used to the VOG up here. Um, we get it all the time, especially when the Kona winds blow. Um, and, you know, if we have to put up with a little ash, then we do. A um, lot better than putting up with the molten lava down below. Or rocks raining down from above. That was a fear, and the fear of major earth shaking as well um, from the explosion. And they basically set up. There really won't be much of that due to these kind of steam explosions. Now, one thing that we did learn today, Marissa, is the people here, especially those who live very close to the volcano, they are paying attention. They've been watching our 3 o'clock daily updates from Civil Defense. They've also been tuning in and watching on TV those community meetings, whether they're down in Pahoa or the ones right up here in the volcano, and they are listening to what those officials have to say, and that is very good news. And like all of us, they're waiting to see when or if this action, this steam explosion is going to happen in the crater. By the way, we want to say mahalo to Susan, who uh, was on that farm there. She actually reached out to it via our Report It feature on our website at KHON2.com. She sent us a photograph of the plume, and I saw it. I called her right back. I said, hey, let's meet and let's talk. So for anybody, if you have any images or anything you want to share, right there, Report It at KHON2.com. Marissa, for now, we send it back to you.